Hi there. Good morning, Teresa. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. How did you survive the Hurricane Iota? Oh, it was good. It was just mostly a light rain all day Tuesday, some on Wednesday, so the city was spared from oh. the, the, all the rain from other parts of the country because since we live in the mountains, there's something about the mountains that shears off a lot of the precipitation that kind of disappears when it comes into our part of the country. So, Oh, fantastic. Thing. We had the whole congregation praying for you, so. Oh, we appreciate that. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys weren't severely impacted. I know there's a lot of areas there was a lot of damage done. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We, we had a, a bad hurricane back in the 90s, Hurricane Mitch, mm -hmm. that did hit the city and it was devastating. I mean, oh. it, it, it set the country back many, many, many years. Oh, goodness. So thank God we didn't have that to deal with. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you. This is okay. Josh Taylor from Honduras meeting us with us today. He um, survived the iota impact with only a little bit of rain. Um, I'd like to go ahead and talk about uh, how, of course, the topic of everybody's on everybody's mind these days is COVID. How what's going on over there with that? Well, COVID has been um, just like in other parts of the world. Um, every day they're they're um, testing people. Every day there are new cases. Um, there for a while they were averaging between 500 and 900 every day. Wow. Uh, new cases. Uh, the population of the country is about nine million. Right now, a little over 100,000 have um, posted or um, tested positive. Wow. And uh, that's similar to some of the states in, mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. So um, the, the, the issue here is uh, uh, the, the hospital care. If, if, if someone does get really sick, they go to the hospital. And if you're poor, um, they can say, hey, you have COVID. But if you don't have the money, you can't um, get the medications you need. You, you can't get, uh, you know, some of the more advanced technology um it's not it's not at, at your fingertips because of the of the cost so a lot of people in this country are very fearful of of uh, covid and um but our family has has been pretty safe um we haven't haven't gotten sick people in our in our churches we, we're not aware of anyone that that has uh, gotten covid um the fiance to andres maria her mom had covid and she actually got it when she went to the hospital because she has other um, medical issues and she um, was tested positive in the hospital for COVID and, and she was doing pretty bad for a while, mm. but um, she pulled through it. Uh, and so it was, it was amazing because the doctors didn't give her really any hope at all, oh. but um, she's fine and going to probably be coming home shortly from the hospital. Uh, so pray, praise God for that. Fantastic. But um, yeah, it's well, it's still a, still an issue. But right now, you hear more about the hurricane than COVID here. So of course, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, God is faithful. <laughs> God is definitely faithful. Yeah. But yeah, we kind of have similar things over here as far as COVID goes. We're um, back in church, Sunday school, mm -hmm. choir. Everything's going. You know, with a few alterations, of course. But that's it's slowly getting back to normal. I think. Um, what is, I hear, I was reading your latest news bulletin for September, and I hear there's some exciting times for Andre and Stephen, Stephen Vallejo. I guess Andre ben yes. Dania, is my saying that right? <laughs> uh, is he married in December? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Um, uh, in the Spanish tongue, they would pronounce it Andres and uh, Stefan, but um, those are two um, young men. They're actually cousins. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andres is getting married in December, uh, the 22nd, just a few days before Christmas. So it looks like by process of elimination, I will be conducting the ceremony because one of the guys that was going to come down from the States said, I can't make it. Okay. So it's, that's going to be me. So that'll be my first wedding and first wedding in Spanish. So it's going to be, uh, it'll be fun, um, oh, wow. but that's going to be the 22nd. And we had plans on ordaining both of them two days before that. But again, because of uh, the, the timing of, of the wedding, some of the pastors could not come down to, uh, down here to Honduras for the ordination. So we bumped it back uh, to January, and I think it's going to work out better because mm -hmm. uh, Andres has a lot on his plate with um, preparing for ordination, preparing for wedding, and then that's Christmas and things are going on at the church. Oh, yes. So I was happy that we could bump that back just one month. That's going to free us up a little bit so we can breathe. So, uh, but we're super excited about that. Uh, my wife and I did marriage counseling with Andres and Maria, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was fun uh, to to see them go through that and to see them talk through some issues and 
So we're excited to see them do things correctly Mm -hmm. because in this country, so many people do it backwards. And uh, there are many people that are living with their girlfriend, not necessarily Mm -hmm. married. And so they are going to be a great example to the community of the church to show the people, here's what biblical marriage looks like. Mm -hmm. We are super excited to see them be example for a new uh, generation uh, in the community of the church. Absolutely. That, that is so exciting. It's, it's amazing seeing God work in, in your missionary work through other people. It's, it's just got to be beyond exciting. Um, and are you comfortable with the language? Obviously, you must be if you're performing the wedding service. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I can, uh, my language has gotten a lot better and each day I'm learning uh, more and more. Um, I'll, I'll definitely have to have everything written out for the wedding, mm-hmm. um, but I can go off, off, off uh, the notes a little bit, but uh, I'll probably stick to the notes. Um, as far as preaching Spanish, I can do little devotionals, mm-hmm. uh, but if it's like a long thing, I'm having to pretty much uh, read it because uh, it's, you know, it's difficult uh, even to, to preach in English, um, you know, to get through the whole thing and for it to make sense and get your point across. So mm-hmm. I'm still learning. Um, I, I've been asked by the, by a pastor on the day, say, hey, when can you preach on a Sunday morning in Spanish? And I said, soon, soon. Uh, I preached this past Sunday with an interpreter and, uh, and, and the, that was good, but yeah, it's coming. Uh, the, the, the kids are all taking Spanish in school. My um, wife, Erin, she's, she's, uh, moving along with her Spanish. We can function quite well. We can go out and do new things and we can, we can get through it. We, we might bloody our nose a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we can manage through it and we can, we can function well. Oh, that's fantastic. How long have you been in Honduras now? We um, first got here in August of 2017. Okay. And we were here um, uh, a little over a year before some things kind of um, happened with the other family that we were with, some unfortunate events. And so we came back to the States uh, to get ordained and uh, to be approved as career BBFI missionaries. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we got back into the country October of 2019 so we've been here this trip uh, for over over a year Mm -hmm. and our plan is to come back next summer uh, just for months to help my son uh, with some future plans because he'll be a senior in high school next year and so we'll you know talk about college or you know what's your next step Caleb and where do you want to go so God is good are you am I understanding your kids aren't with you there or they are yeah they are all all three of them are here living with us Uh, they're Caleb is 16, Becca is 13, and Micah is 11. Fun ages. It's fun when you get those teenage years. (laughs) Yes, they're far more capable. Yes, exactly. How are they doing with the language? Uh, They're doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, Caleb, um, I would say of all of us, he's probably the best. He can carry Mm -hmm. on conversations really well and catch some things that my wife and I don't necessarily catch. And Caleb, since he's has been in school down here, he knows more of you know how do teenagers talk? What does it sound like? Oh, so uh, it's 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 fun to see him interact with people. Oh, and uh, if we get a bind, we look at Caleb and say, "What did they just say?" And he's able to tell us what's going on. Wow, kids pick up yeah. so quickly. I wish I had that child mind again, where you could pick up <laughs> right away. I do too. Yes. Um, as yeah. far as the, the COVID, are you guys still meeting in person? And uh, are there any, there's not, how are the limitations there with that for your services? Well, the government does have limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, from a church standpoint, honestly, I don't know what they are there mm-hmm. for a while. They said no um, in, in person, but now you, you can. Our Sunday mornings in our, our mountain church, they're meeting in person. Mm-hmm. Of course, we have social distancing. Everyone has to wear a mask. Everyone has to have a temperature. We put gel on their hands when they come in. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a, a, a work here in the city. We have a Spanish arm and we have an and we have an English arm. And right now in our home, we're meeting to have an English service. And we don't have any any restrictions. It's just us and another English couple, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, our Spanish arm, they're still doing Zoom calls Sunday mornings. Okay. And um, we've talked about trying to get back to meeting in person, so we'll see uh, when when we can make that happen. But um, yeah, we can we can meet, and it's not a problem. It's it's much better, I feel like, to be there in person and enjoy the fellowship, you know, instead it of is. over Zoom. I agree with you on that. <laughs> um, Zoom was getting really old. <laughs> oh yes, it's just not personal, yeah. you know, personable enough. It really isn't. Um, 
how is that? I know you were doing a church outreach. How's that going? Yeah, on Thursdays we do uh, a visitation ministry because we have our eye on another community mm-hmm. that's uh, probably about 15 minutes from our mountain church. Right now we're busing some of those people to our mountain church. Um, if we had a bigger bus and more time, we could haul a lot more people, but we had to limit it because it, it, it'll eat up your day, you know, wow. making that trip. And it's hard on our bus because the roads are awful, especially with the rains. Um, yeah. You can't go very fast. And so, um, but yeah, we're trying to do an outreach in that area. And uh, we're going to be starting a Bible study in somebody's home soon. Oh, great. Uh, um, and with that, I know we'll be able to draw more people and uh, we can preach. We already have our, our first series ready to go. It's um, based on salvation, uh, four points. So we've got it ready to go. Mm-hmm. We just need to get through this hurricane stuff and uh, evaluate, hey, where can we do this? And then uh, get started. And mm-hmm. so that's on Thursdays. But we also have an outreach with our food ministry. Um, that we've been doing since March. Uh, we had a Mana feeding center, but with COVID, schools shut down, feeding centers shut down, so we had to shut down our feeding center. And so every week we've been uh, taking food to people in our church and in our community. Uh, r- right now we're doing about about 50 bags per week. That's that's kind of the, the max of our budget. We could we could do more easily if, if we had more, but that's all we can do right now. And uh, so we do that every... Um, let me think. Every Thursday morning, we pass out those bags, mm-hmm. and uh, we're hoping to get the the feeding center open back uh, up again after the first of the year. Mm-hmm. Well, that's um, we. I can definitely see the challenges there, but I believe that, and I'm sure you believe this. I know you believe as well that God put you there for a reason, and He will give you everything you need. As far as even if it's struggle at times, yeah. He will give you everything you need, and it's just yeah. I admire the missionaries that go into all these different countries and uh, sometimes deal with maybe things that are scary. <laughs> and uh, I know me and the congregation are just so thankful that, you, that you're that you out there spreading the word. Uh, so many people are lost and need it, need hope, especially in this time frame that we're in. So um, I just wanted to say how much I thank you guys for, for doing that, being the missionary that you are. Um, yeah. Let me see. Thank you for praying for us. Yeah, we will keep praying. Um, can we look forward to some uh, future bulletins so we can uh, get some more updates after this? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yes, yes. yesterday I, I, I pretty much wrote out our, our next one, mm-hmm. um, giving an update on, on the hurricane and what happened and what we did as an outreach and mm-hmm. what we're doing next week. So I hope to have that done today or tomorrow so I can get that out to folks. Oh, fantastic. We look forward to those. We really do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so as far Good. as personal needs go, do you, is there anything particular that you would need, that your family would need? Wow, I can't think of anything. I mean, God has met all of our needs. Um, we, we've even had some, some extra support come in to, to help us with some different Christmas things that, that we're doing. So oh, great. I, right now we are good. We, we, we try not to ask for a lot personally because God has met our needs. Right. Um, so we're doing well. Thank you so much. Well, surely you have some prayer needs. I see you went to uh, for the outreach events and short services. Yeah. What, what else can we pray for for you guys? Um, okay, so Monday, uh, for the first time in our church's history, we are taking a group of Hondurans on, on a mission trip in country to one of the parts impacted really bad. And uh, we have received some donations from the states to help us buy some food and buy some crocs Mm -hmm. uh, to take to the people so our plan is to leave monday morning okay um with oh probably four or five hundred pounds of food so we can pass out to the folks uh the the food that we're going to be passing out is rice and beans um we call it manteca uh which i guess is like um like a vegetable shortening like crisco Uh in the in the tub we're also going to pass out maseca, which is like a corn flour based, um, corn and flour based um, flour product that they can make tortillas mm-hmm. and salt, sugar, coffee. Um, I think that's about it. So that they can make a meal and they can okay. feed themselves. It, it's not much. The bag maybe weighs maybe 10 pounds, mm. but it's something that we can do with some of these hard hit areas. And we also have crocs. Those are good because... Mm-hmm. Unlike tennis shoes, they're not going to get wet or under that moisture. 
Yes. And they can walk in the mud and they can wash them easily. So we're going to pass that out. And we're also going to buy um, a hot meal for them mm -hmm. um, for about two to uh, for about three hundred dollars. We can buy <clears throat> five hundred baleadas. A baleada is like a tortilla with beans and some this sprinkled cheese. And so we have a, a, a some ladies in a, in that town that can make them for us, and they're going to make us some rice, and we'll take this this food and we'll just pass it out to the people and they can oh. they stand in line and then we'll have an opportunity that, that we can share the gospel with them so pray for our trip next monday that's going to be that's going to be awesome to okay. see that uh secondly we have a dental clinic that is that uh, we have built we're right now trying to finish it once we get this dental clinic done we can start a dental outreach in in our community and we need prayer about that um, because um, we have many opportunities for outreach, but the, the problem is manpower. We don't want to stretch ourselves thin because probably like your church, 80% of the ministry is done by 20% of the people. Yes. And uh, it's, no diff it's no different here. We've got a group of about six of us that pretty much do everything. And the challenge is trying to get new people plugged in, you know, people that are faithful that, that we, we, we want to see in, in the ministry. So pray for that dental clinic. And then also pray for um, that opportunity where we're going to do the Bible study. And we hope to start um, a work in that area as well. It's the, the name of the area is called Reyed. I'll spell it for you. Mm, please. Um, R-E, yeah, R-E-N-A-C-E-R. -E -E and what that means, it, it means born again. Oh, uh, that's the name of the place that we want to start uh, a little church. So it's I love cool. it. <laughs> How do you yeah. pronounce that again? Yeah. So, uh, so <clears throat> Reina Sayer. Reina Sayer. Reina, you have to roll the R. <laughs> I know. My two years of Reina Spanish in high school yeah. have not helped me. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. are there, is there anything else we can pray for? You guys are such a blessing. Yeah. Those are the, those are the three big things right now that we're seeking God. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's about all I have. Is there anything else you would like to share? No, I, I just appreciate the opportunity to share with you folks directly through Zoom. So you can yes. see us, uh, you, yes. can, you can hear my voice and, uh, and, and hopefully hear of, um, about the people here. Exactly. We, and we so look forward to hearing how you guys are doing over there. So we yeah. can pray for you that your needs are met. And you are such a blessing yeah. over there being over there like that. Um, I guess that about wraps it up. Can we go ahead and pray? Yes, we can. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the tailors. Father, thank you for their, their dedication, Lord. Thank you for meeting their needs. We ask that you continue to keep them safe and healthy, and please bless their outreach, Father. And thank you so much that they're a blessing to others. And may they win many souls to you, Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you again for everything they do for your service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. I will be in touch with you. Okay. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>